So, you wanted to know my salvation story? Well, when I was like two, I asked my mom if I was going to heaven or not, and she led me in the prayer of salvation. Pretty anticlimactic, right? Uh, fortunately, that's not the whole thing. After all, I did grow past the age of two. Um, I've always been a church kid. My parents have been strong Christian examples for my whole life, so that's definitely helped. Uh, they've always been there for me. But, um, for a long time, I didn't really feel close to God. Like, in my brain, I knew he loved me, but it just kind of always felt like he was way up there in the sky, just kind of staring down at me. A lot of times I uh, struggled with condemnation, which is like more guilty feelings when there's no reason for them to be there. Um, I felt terrible about the smallest things, and I was afraid of a lot, too. I was always afraid of messing up, of doing something bad. You know, as Christians, we're not supposed to. We're supposed to be perfect, right? Yeah. Uh, well, this kind of came and went. I got, I kind of got closer to God as through different worship services and sermons and things like that. He touched my heart and showed me he loved me. I sort of got it, but it didn't filter into my heart too well. Uh, one of the biggest turning points for me happened about a few years ago. There's this one part in the Bible, I'm pretty sure it's in the New Testament and one of the Gospels, where Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. I forget the context, but he basically says that God will forgive every sin but one, and that that is a person's blaspheming the Holy Spirit, like disrespecting him or something like that. I was terrified. A lot of times I have to fight off like bad thoughts that come into my head, which has been pretty normal for most of my life. Uh, but these thoughts started coming into my head of what I believed were blaspheming the Holy Spirit. I didn't want that. I was scared to death. Uh, my dad gave me a little book to read, and that helped some by like, informing me about it. But at one point, this fear got so bad that I actually had a panic attack. My parents stood with me through that and helped me understand that that fear meant that I was actually okay. That fear meant that I wanted to be with God. I wanted to be on his side, so I could never actually blaspheme the Holy Spirit and mean it. But more importantly, they told me about my God's love. <laughs> they reminded me that he is gracious and full of mercy, and most importantly, that he loves me even more than they did in that moment. A scripture uh, just came to my mind. I think my mom told it to me then. It's uh, Romans 8, 38 through 39, which says, Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Not bad thoughts either. So from then on, I kind of moved into a sort of freedom that I didn't have to worry about what went on in my head. I just had to force the bad thoughts out and keep living my life. This is a little off topic, but uh, one of the things I try to do on a normal basis is to spend a little time in worship and to watch a bit of sermons. In that time, I found some sermons from Bishop Clarence McClendon, and they really helped. <clears throat> anyway, as I kept living life, the bad thoughts came and went, and I've continued to grow closer to God, I guess. I figured out my relationship with him is a bit different than other people's, and that that's okay. I'm not one of those, whoa, yeah, Jesus, kind of people, you know? I mean, yeah, whoa, Jesus, he's awesome. But I'm a lot more of a chill person, I guess you could say. My relationship with him is a lot more chill than that. A lot of people are like, yeah, chase after God, you know? But I don't really see the point of chasing after him when he's right here with me all the time. I walk with him, metaphorically speaking. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I do want to be where he wants me to be. I want to get to know him more. I mean, he's a really great guy. He's the best guy in the whole universe. But I think the point is to try to get to know him in your own way. He made you the way you are for a reason. Anyway, uh, back to the story bit. Recently, uh, last week actually, I noticed a kind of change. If you can't tell, I'm a pretty non-professional person when I get to be, and I kind of consider Jesus my friend. So I call him man and guy and stuff like that. Well, last week I sensed kind of a more serious tone. I'm not sure how to describe it. It was different. It was less personal than it had been. And I wasn't sure why. I felt something getting on to me because I wasn't working on my writing, which is another story. Um, I've been taking summer classes, and by the time I'm done with classwork, I just feel like chilling out, you know? Doing what I want. And that had been okay up until the few days before the weekend. And so we went to church, my dad's a pastor now, and he started talking about how, like, how we're supposed to be going after God and living for God. 
And the thoughts in my head were really getting on to me about that because I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing for him. I wasn't working on the book I was supposed to be working on. And it was just like, am I really living for God? <sighs> Suddenly I realized I could feel it, that this was the same kind of like spirit that had sent me into a panic attack those years ago. It felt different. It was about a different thing, but it was of the same kind. So I started trying to beat it back. The past week had been full of blessings, and I doubt that God would have blessed me if I hadn't been going the way I should be going, if I hadn't been doing what I should have been doing. I remembered that God loved me, that He truly loves me, and He has always brought me to where I'm supposed to be. Long story short, I didn't have another panic attack. I did end up breaking down and crying some, as it was just kind of a tough day altogether, but I did not have a panic attack. I've kind of figured out now that it's okay to screw up. God doesn't expect us to be perfect. He knows that. He's always known that. All he expects of us is to try our best and trust him, and that is enough. That personal feeling has come back, which makes me happy. I'm glad to have my friend back. I'm still working on overcoming fear, but, you know, we've all got something we're working on. Really, that's about it. I'm happy where I am with him. He's got my back, and he really loves me. I just think that's the most incredible thing, that God, the perfect God, is love. He doesn't just love, he is love, and he's always with us. He forgives us when we screw up as long as we ask for forgiveness. Nothing we can ever do will separate us from him if we don't want to. And just, his love is so amazing. He loves you too, just as much as he loves me. I could tell you even more stories about how he's had my back and my family's back if you wanted to hear it, but basically, he's just always there for us. He can be there for you too if you want him to be. All you have to do is ask.